Welcome back to another episode of The Single Season. We are here trying to navigate the sometimes treacherous waters of the dating scene. In this episode, we will be discussing some of the struggles that the modern women are facing, especially the younger ladies, with a face, with a person that you are extremely familiar with, I am sure. We have Amani from One Thing About It. So, Amani, I'm going to turn the mic over to you and tell us who you are and tell us about the show. Yes, thank you. So my name's Amani. Um, the handle is Amani Talks from the One Thing About It podcast. I just really like created recently a podcast called One Thing About It, like earlier February 2023, because um, I wanted to give specifically black women a space to voice what we're learning with today's relationships. Because like you said, it's not getting any easier for relationships with us. It's really getting harder. And I just wanted to give women, if not anything else, a place to vocalize it. Because, you know, the world will always foster a safe space for men to say whatever they want to say, however they want to say it. But they're not going to do the same thing for women. So I wanted to create that space for us because it's needed. And if nothing else, I just want women to know that whatever you're thinking, you're not alone. If you think it and you don't want to say it, I'm going to say it. And so that's fine. Like, I will be that. So, um, yeah, it's just the environment to um, make women feel um, safe and like it's okay to discuss what we need to discuss about our relationships nowadays. Well said. So one thing you just said in your introduction, she's starting already, <laughs> is that there are safe spaces for men to express how they feel publicly, but you don't feel like there are safe spaces for women to do so. I'm sure a lot of guys would say the opposite. Women have been free since the, since the onset of the women's suffrage movement to express how they feel publicly. And when men do, they're sassy, they're this, they're that. So can you talk a little bit more about safe spaces for men and women? in today's society? Yeah, I mean, a safe space for a man is everywhere. I mean, where where is it not a safe space for them? Um, they can be mean at work. They can be um, bossy at work. They can be bossy at home. They can be aggressive with their friends. You know, the, the world will always think it's okay for men to act like that because that's kind of what we expect from men. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to women... You act sassy at work, and all of a sudden, you you the a b word. You know, mm -hmm. like you she's can cuss, a, girl. We yeah, okay. free. <laughs> you <laughs> no, know, this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just like you know what Nikki said. You know, like they expect women to take whatever you want. You know, like if I accepted the pickle juice, I'd be drinking pickle juice right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you when you're like, nah, I'm not gonna accept whatever you're giving me because I am who I am and I know who I am, then you're a bitch, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, the world will always let men just do and say whatever they want to um, because, you know, several things, patriarchy and all that. But um, women are always, you know, you have to be soft-spoken and sweet and I have to talk like this and mm -hmm. touch my hair. And it's just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, I just touch yeah. my hair, y'all. I, I was just adjusting <laughs> my ponytail, but yes, I get no, it. No, yeah, so it's just like, no, it's okay for women to be, you know, I appreciate a loud woman. You know, uh -huh. I do. I appreciate a woman that is going to speak up um, and not just take anything. The world wants us to take whatever, you know, it's going to give us. Like, I'm not going to take anything. I'm going to create my own lane. Yes. Well yeah. said. So one of the clips, I think the first time that I saw you across my timeline, you had a clip where you were talking about um, older men dating younger women and thinking that they're the ones who are coming up, mm -hmm. thinking that they're the ones who got the prize and they're the ones who are winning in that transaction. Can you talk a little bit more about that, uh, the interaction between older men and younger women? Women and who's really winning and what's the, what it's what's going on between these people? Yeah, so um, you know, I can acknowledge that the world considers a woman's value to be her youth and beauty, and the world considers a man's value to be his position in the world and his money. Yep. So you know, that's that's not up for argument. That is what the world values for, from each uh, sex. So I, I can acknowledge that. Yeah. Um, the average man will want a younger, prettier girl, right? But there has to be a time in your life, in a man's life, where he's like, yeah, I should probably stop chasing the 21-year-old, especially when I'm 50. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's, you know... And here's the thing, too, that I didn't really get to discuss because people was already on my head about it. Mm -hmm. Um... If a man could go, and I think I talked about this anyway already on, on the Instagram, but if a man could go lower in age with whom he dates, he would. Mm -hmm. The only thing stopping a man from dating a 13-year-old is the law. Mm -hmm. And we know that they still do that. So I don't think it's um, okay for us to think that it's okay that a man that is in his 50s and 60s is going to date a 20-year-old and we're just like, well, we see it all the time. Like, just because we see it all the time does not make it okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not okay. And then, you know, I just want women to acknowledge that 
when these men are trying to get with you, like, because I'm in my 20s and I have men 50s and 60s actually trying to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, what's going on here? Like, I don't think it's normal for me because, first of all, what do you want with me? Mm -hmm. I know what you want with me. Mm -hmm. And if I'm... And what, no, what do we want? Let's get clear. What do they want from you? I mean, the older men, they're want, they want someone cute on the arm, but they're in it for the sex. You know, they're in it for the sex. Um, do I think a 50, 60-year-old man is going to, like, marry me and want me for me? No. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, if you're somebody that you date for money and then he dates for looks, like, okay, like, that's whatever. It is what it is. But I, I just hate for women to think that... Um, that they're being valued by older men because that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, what the case is, is they're at an age where they are still childish and thinking. They're 50 thinking like a 25 year old. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have what it takes to date a woman who's on her shit. Like, you know, if he has three kids, she got three kids. They know what it is. Like he wants to date somebody that's a little bit more um, younger, naive, um, will think that she's on the come up with him. Mm -hmm. um, the money aspect is something too. You know, if a younger woman is even interested in you, she's she's not interested in you because for anything else besides the money. Yeah. So, you know, I just want those relationships to be like, it's, it's not okay for men to think that they can date so much younger and we say, it's okay because we see it all the time. Like, it's a lot of things we see all the time. Yeah. You know, and doesn't that doesn't make, make it acceptable. It, or, exactly, right. exactly. So it's just like, yeah, these men are, are not the prize. Um, older men that think <laughs> I was just on a podcast <laughs> and I don't want to like spill too much tea, but I was just on a podcast with somebody and the man that I was on the podcast with was obviously very much older. Like he was probably not 50, but in his forties. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, how old are you? You know what this man said to me? What? You know, mentally I feel 24. So I'm gonna go with that. Mm -hmm. Nigga. Uh -huh. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. Like, you're ashamed to tell me how old you are because you know you want to date girls in their 20s. Yes. And you want me to be like, oh, you know, he's mentally 24. He's cool. And, no, nigga. Like, that's not cool. And he is aware that that's undesirable. Because, because if he was, he's hiding his age. Right. Because if he were proud of it, and which is why women always say, oh, you can never ask women their age because there is a shame attached to being older. Mm -hmm. I think that you are absolutely right on the money when you say, generally speaking, in our society, the value of a woman is attached to her youth and her beauty and the value of a man is attached to his position and his income. Mm -hmm. And so even though we recognize and we appreciate that, he absolutely did not want to answer that question because clear as day, he knew that he would be seen as less desirable to you. And that's why he didn't want to say it. And I feel like he thought that I would think that he's a creep. Mm -hmm. You know, because they know. they. That's why I meet so many older men when they hit on me. I ask them, how old are you? They never want to tell me their age because mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. they know what they're doing because if they were proud, if they saw nothing wrong with it, they would be like, yeah, you know, I'm 56. I got a few kids. What of it? Mm -hmm. But they don't. They're like, how old do I look? You know, I, you know, I, I don't give a fuck. You know, like, I honestly don't. Uh -huh. And it's just like, you are hiding your age because you know there's something wrong with you trying to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And they know it, too. It's, you know, a lot of men were mad at, and you know, in the comments, but they know it because here's the thing, too. A lot of men do things in their lives and try to justify things that they do that they know for a fact they would not want their daughter to encounter. Mm -hmm. They know that if their 21-year-old daughter came to them and was like, yeah, my boyfriend, he 50, he will go through the roof. Mm -hmm. He will be like, what does old nigga want with you? He know what he want with you. Right. So why is it okay for you to do that to somebody else's daughter, but nobody can do that to your daughter? Like, yes. think about that. Well said. I think one of the parts of the conversation that hasn't been tapped on enough is that, yes, we're not as focused on youth and handsomeness for guys. However, there's also a plateau. Like, it's not as you get older than right, when you're 40 and then now you're still attractive and then you're 50 and you're even more attractive and then you're 60. Like, there is going to be a plateau. And if that plateau is 35 for women, man, Maybe I'll give 43 for men, but don't think like as you get older, you are ascending and you are just as handsome. Absolutely not. Absolutely I would not. also say that there's a lot of assumption with if you're older, you're more financially stable. There's a lot of bum ass dudes who are bums when they're in their 20s, bums when they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So there's this assumption that as you get older, you should be doing better financially, but that's not the case. It'll be the same bum dudes who's on the corner in the corner store. No, seriously. I'm from Brooklyn, y'all hear my accent. In the corner <laughs> store, right? And they are being or performing just as poorly as they did 20 years ago. And here's the thing, too, because I got the, the argument that men or women in their 20s, 30s, whatever, are more attracted to uh, men older than them because of the money. But here's the thing. Even if a man had money and I thought that that was attractive, his mindset 
is what's going to really like reel me in. So that was my whole argument. Like it doesn't even matter about men having more money. It matters if you mentally think that you're 24 at 50, nigga, I don't want nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. Because that is like, how is that acceptable for you to be like, yeah, I'm 50, but mentally I'm 24? That's that, not attractive, that's too. That's not attractive. <laughs> because, nigga, that means you're mentally behind me. <laughs> like, right. why, like, why would you even say that? Like, so it's just all about the mentality, too. It's just like, I don't even want somebody that would want somebody half their age. Like, what's, what's going on with you? Yep, absolutely. And so another one of your clips that has gone viral is in regards to your desire to have children children and your opinion of children and legacy and all those things. So now you have the opportunity. Can you expound on your thoughts around children and legacy? Yeah. So um, I think children are great for other people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't desire children basically because, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. You know, I'm the oldest of like eight kids and I grew up babysitting. And now that I don't have to do that anymore, I don't want to babysit my own kid. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm over it. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why I personally don't want to have kids, but I do feel like kids are great because black people do need to have those two parent households that they can pass on something valuable to their kids. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, I'm not against kids because I want my community to expand and expand in a positive way. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's something that anyone should expect from anyone, especially because it's so much harder because it's so much more expensive to have kids nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's just my personal belief. Um, but I do appreciate people that have kids. Um, but I think that a lot of times people have kids just to have them, mm -hmm. especially in the black community. Um, they don't think about their kids' future when they are having kids outside of wedlock. Mm. Um, you know, and then, you know, it happens and a lot of women's rhetoric is, well, I don't need a man. I can take care of my kid by myself. Yes, yeah, sis, you might not need a kid, but does that kid not need the father? Mm -hmm. Like, why weren't you thinking about what's best for your kid when you were engaging in this? You know, like, mm -hmm. it, it's so easy to have sex. Anybody can have sex, you know? But if, it, if there's even just a 1% chance that your kid's life is going to be better because you took the time to be like, nah, let me make sure I got a partner that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. If there's even a 1% chance that they have more resources, more opportunities, um, the double income is going to help them, why not do that for your kid? Because right. it's not about, once you get pregnant, it is no longer about you. Yes. Like, okay, sis, you don't need a man, good for you. But it is not about you. Like, stop saying that dumb shit. Because mm -hmm. first of all, why wouldn't you want a man to help you with your kid? Mm -hmm. And then second of all, it's not about you needing a man. It's about that that kid needing the second parent. Yes. So, you know, people have kids way too willy-nilly. They think that their legacy is going to be them just having kids. But if you have a one-parent household, you're struggling with your kid. Not saying that every single parent household struggles, but we see what happens. Like, mm -hmm. we aren't blind to, I have friends, I have family that's been in that situation. So it's like, when you see that they struggle and you think that having kids is going to be your legacy, what are you passing down to your kids? Mm -hmm. Like, what, like, really, like, I, I really want to know, like, if, if you're struggling, um, your kid is already limited in resources, they're limited in mentality because they don't have both parents, what are you really passing down? You're passing down more struggle. Mm -hmm. You're passing down a cycle of trauma. You're passing down, a, a now that kid is going to grow up and just like you thought it was okay to be a single parent, they're thinking it's okay to be a single parent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really hard to duplicate things in our own life that we have not seen be done successfully. Yeah. So... I just want people to really think about why are y'all having these kids? Because it's not about legacy if you don't have really anything to pass down to them. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want your family name to, to continue on, just say that, even though your family name don't really mean shit to begin with. Um, I mean, well, I our, it's our slave name. Exactly. Your family names aren't even our fucking family names. <laughs> so why are you so gung-ho on passing down this, this slave master's name anyway? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just like, really think about why you're having kids because the, the legacy is not an automatic thing. Mm -hmm. If you haven't built anything for your kids, then that shit really don't matter. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your response had to do with like financial resources. So what do you say to someone who has potentially unlimited resources? You mentioned um, on your platform before in regards to like Nellie and Ashanti, multimillionaires who have all of the financial backing to be able to afford a thousand children. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts about having children when you're financially sound, but yeah. not necessarily in wedlock? So the financial foundation for a kid is just the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like that's even something that we should even talk about anymore because we know it takes money for a kid. Like, mm -hmm. duh. So if you are financially stable to have a kid, great, you should be. But there's so much more than that because no amount of money in the world, no number of nannies, no community funding, whatever, is going to replace a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I don't care how much money you got. And a good example of this is, um, you know, Candy Burris, and she had, you know, Riley when she was really young. 
Young, Candy has always had money. She mm-hmm. is a millionaire. She's yes. a multimillionaire. But we saw that episode. I don't know if you watched Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Did you see that episode where Riley got off the phone with her dad and she just started busting out crying? Yeah. So it's just like Candy has all these resources. She gives her uh, daughter whatever she wants. You know, her daughter is spoiled. She's taken care of. Yeah. But you can still see the hurt that she has from not having her father in the house. Yes. So it's like all the money in the world will never replace a father. It will never replace a mother. So when I'm talking about, you know, Nelly and Ashanti and how I feel like she's going out bad because we know you want a marriage, sis. You said it last year. Mm-hmm. So people were like, well, how you know she wants marriage and everybody wants marriage? You want the commitment of kids, but not the commitment of marriage. Mm-hmm. When you can end a marriage like that, but you right. can't you can't take a kid out, right. you're going to always be a mom. Mm-hmm. So you're going to skip over an easier commitment for a long-term commitment and then really act like the dad doesn't matter? No. I'm not going to let you know. You know, people like to downplay a two-parent household because they don't got it. Mm. Knowing damn well that if their baby father would have proposed to them, not I'm not saying that they would have accepted it automatically, but every girl that has a baby would have liked at least for the baby father to propose. Yes. If even the only reason was that they got pregnant, at least he's trying to step up. You're right. But y'all didn't get that, so now y'all trying to downplay it. Mm-hmm. Y'all not fooling me. Okay. Everybody would have rather had a single <laughs> two-parent household for their kids. Y'all not fooling me. Mm-hmm. So you're a young woman in your 20s, and you have such a strong opinion about the institution of marriage, about that level of commitment, a two-parent household, when it seems like ladies who are relatively close to you in age aren't as dedicated to that belief system. Where does that come from? It really just comes from, and it's not even, you know, everything that I say on my platform, I hope that if it does nothing else, that it benefits black people. Mm -hmm. That is always my goal. That's always the purpose that I come back to. That is the mission for my podcast, Mm -hmm. is if you don't get anything else from it, it's that you know I'm trying to elevate the black community because that is my role. Mm -hmm. You know, every other race, they they can do whatever they like. They can move as individuals because... At the end of the day, they're all working towards the common mission of advancing their race. Mm -hmm. Black people are the only people that don't give a fuck about advancing their race. Mm -hmm. They will have kids out of wedlock. They will marry interracially. They will do all these things that negate any kind of um, progress that we can make with our community all in the sake of, well, it's my life, whatever makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you're going to chase what makes you happy your whole life, sis? Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. When happiness can be here one day and gone the next day, I want to live with purpose. I don't care if I live with happiness. My purpose will make me happy. Mm -hmm. But we just willy-nilly, we just do things. We don't think about them twice. And I just want black people to just sit and just think about what we are actually doing. Because if you don't want your kid to grow up like you grew up, do better. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want black people to do better. Like, that's always, that's, that's the takeaway from everything that I do. Yeah. I think one of the issues is that a lot of folks don't see the way that they came up as problematic. Exactly. Right? And so, even if they can admit that there was some struggle, that the electricity wasn't on all the time, or maybe they had to, like, kick some roaches out of the cereal box, they'll say, well, it made me stronger, Mm -hmm. right? It made, it gave me thick skin. It made me street smart. So, one of the issues that I think that we're really facing is a lack of insight. Like, they just don't have, like, the uh, capability to be reflective, to say, this was problematic, this was hurtful, I don't want this for my potential future children, yeah. ergo, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. Hold off on having children, not have any at all, uh, vet more appropriately so that when I choose a spouse, it's the right person and will potentially be a good father. Yeah. I think that's the part that's missing. That people aren't being honest that their childhood was not as terrible, (laughs) off-putting, difficult, complicated, uh, traumatic as it was. I think that's really the bigger issue here. No, definitely. It's hard for people to take accountability because if you take accountability for life choices that affected you your entire life, now you really have to be like, yo, like my entire life, I've been dealing with this. You know, we make decisions every day that in five years probably won't affect us. You know, Mm -hmm. what I have for breakfast today won't affect me in five years. Mm -hmm. But me having sex, you know, for example... And that producing a child and then that child going probably their whole life without a dad, Mm -hmm. that's going to affect not only me, but the kid their entire life. And people don't want to face that harsh reality of, damn, like, it's not just affecting me, it's affecting my kid, my community, my future generations. That's a hard pill to swallow that your decision affected someone else, yeah. you know? So people just don't want to face that because it is really hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow. Absolutely. Definitely. So a lot of the content that I create are for women who are busy professional women, 30 plus, 40s, 50s. Mm-hmm. You as a woman who is in your 20s, what are some of the dating struggles that 20 year old or women who are in their 20s are facing right now? Well, when it comes to black women, um, you know, I, the, the thing that I identify and I really like researched is that um, 
there is a small number of marriageable black men that we are going to encounter, mm. right? And then even the number of marriageable black men that we do have, they aren't interested in marriage until they're like in their 40s. Mm. So when it comes to, you know, black men, black women in their 20s, if a black woman at 27, 28 says, yeah, I'm ready for marriage, the average black man is not. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just be honest, they're not. So, you know, I feel like a lot of times we, as black women, we tend to focus on our education, our careers, and things like that, while, you know, other racial groups, they focus on that too. But they, you know, I think that black people are just not as um, family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that we see the value in marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we don't see the value in marriage because we can always be a baby mother. We can always be a baby father. Mm -hmm. We don't need the wedding. We can always have a baby shower. Mm -hmm. You know, like we settle for things that are, I'm not going to say below us, but we settle for things that are, uh, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, if you want marriage, you settle for a baby. You know, mm -hmm. like stuff like that because the marriageable number of black men is so small and it decreases like every few years. Mm -hmm. um, just for, you know, several factors, um, unemployment rates, imprisonment, mm -hmm. um, men that are financially set up to even have a family, you know, just things like that. So it's just hard for younger people to even get in serious relationships because, number one, when you're in a city like Atlanta and everyone thinks they have a thousand options, mm -hmm. um, they're going to explore those options. Mm -hmm. And so they can't anymore. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that you are 30, 40, now you're like, oh, yeah, let me settle down. And now you're looking for you know, someone that's, it's, it's just, it's just really, it's just really weird. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like we are the only group of people that really just don't value. Um, we don't value marriage. We don't value real relationships. A lot mm -hmm. of the time we are in it for play play until we're in our fifties. Mm -hmm. And then potentially as too damaging, what's, what's the big deal about waiting until forties or fifties? Why not? I mean, I advise women to like have a single of seasonness or um, a season of singleness and, you know, do it with a purpose because I don't think that you should always just be dating your whole life. I think that you need time to like really be like, let me get this out of my system. Let me focus on this and then do that. So like, yeah, 100 percent. But, you know, you wait until you're in your 40s and 50s and then now you're rushing. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking anything because mm -hmm. you like, oh, shit, like. I, I dilly dallied, you know, if, if, if you know, because not everybody wants kids in marriage. Like, uh -huh. that's not for everybody. But if you do want that and you kind of, you know, date for play and you date for fun for decades and now you like, oh, shit, I want to get married. Now you like, damn, like, I got to take whatever I can get. Right. You know, so I feel like sometimes waiting too long when you do want marriage um, can come at your detriment because then you feel like, OK, now I don't got a lot of time. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, because like we said, like people value Youth and beauty. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of times women in their 40s, they'd be like, oh, let me just take what I can get because I'm in my 40s. And right. that's a, a thing that I felt like, you know, when we were talking about Ashanti, I can't help but think that that was, if she is pregnant, who knows that, you know, she hasn't confirmed it. But if she is pregnant, I can't help but think that she's thinking, damn, I'm in my 40s. Um, maybe this is the last chance for me to have a kid, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to take it, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel like that's the rhetoric for a lot, a lot of women. They feel the the rush, they feel... Um, as they age, they aren't maybe as valuable, even though that's a myth, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just like, well, if you want that, let's focus on it when we are quote unquote in our prime, when it's a little bit easier because, mm -hmm. you know, you get a little older and then you, you definitely feel the, you feel rushed. Right, 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 right. Um, now you did mention about the rates of marriageable black men, but then you also earlier mentioned something about maybe interracial r marriage might not be what's best for the black community. Mm -hmm. So for black women who desire marriage, but not necessarily having a pool, a plentiful pool, what are your thoughts about interracial marriage so that they can create the family that they desire under the institution of marriage, having children that they can leave something for? Yeah. So I touched on this also when it comes to black women and you are someone that you do like yeah I want to get married I want to have kids and you are really trying to do it the right way if you are not finding black men that because you know as women our position is not to um chase our position is not to go out looking we are to be found mm -hmm. so if you're kind of like waiting around for the man to find you and black men are like looking you over because they don't want to get married um, especially when you're a dark skinned black woman, like that just adds a whole nother layer of difficulty because we are so colorist as a people. Mm -hmm. So if I was like a dark skinned black woman and I wanted to get married and, you know, black men are not looking at me. Yeah, I'm gonna start dating, you know, outside my race. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I feel like there's a big difference from when black women do it from when men or uh, black men do it, because like I said, our positions are different. You know, black men are the ones that are going out picking. And when they already know that our community needs more like 
if you acknowledge that the black community needs to get married more, we need mm. to stop having children out of wedlock and that the number for black men or black women that get married is kind of low. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a black man that wants to help your community and help black women, you wouldn't marry within your race. You wouldn't pick somebody outside your race. Mm. So when black women are waiting to be picked, but black men are picking, that's a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a black woman wanting to get married and black men are looking me over, I'm going to date outside my race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But black men, they're the ones that are choosing to date outside their race and they're looking over black women, you mm. know? So yeah, it's, it's just different. And I feel, and I agree with you. Like um, if I'm a black woman and I want to get married and yeah, I'm 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 a date a white guy. Mm. Like I'm a date whoever is choosing me because that's what I want. That makes sense. So we just talked about one of the struggles of single women in regards to marriageable men. What are some other struggles that you're seeing for again women who are in their twenties or older? What are some of the struggles that we're facing? Um, I think the number one thing that we are facing, if I'm being honest, is just um it's hard to fund a family. Um it's just gotten so much more expensive. Mm. Um, parents, when they were 30, they had a house by then. Mm. Us being 30, we can't even think about a house. Mm. Like, are you kidding me? Like, so, you know, I, th I think, you know, we, we give a lot of grief to men, but I can sympathize with their struggle a little because you got to buy a house. You got to take care of your wife. You got to take care of your kids. That is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the average man is not making the money to fund a family. They're not making the money to qualify for a house. They're not making enough money to damn near even for themselves, you know, to mm -hmm. really feel like they are in a position to where they like, OK, I got my shit together. Um, so I think that's really the number one reason, because if men had it, they would do it. Mm. You know, if man, if a man had the resources, um, he would get married. He would take care of his wife. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't have that. So they have to act like, nah, I'm OK being a fuck boy. I'm OK not getting married because they just don't got it by default. They got to be that. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think it's just the culture and the economy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just mm -hmm. hard for us to even be a unit because we got to fend for ourselves. Damn near. Yeah. 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 I get that. I understand exactly what you're saying. One of um, another message on your platform that went viral was in regards to men's ego and their capability to deal with being with a 10 out of 10 woman. Yeah. So first, can we define what is a 10 out of 10 woman? Um, everyone's definition is going to be different. But when I envision a 10 out of 10 woman, I envision someone that's beautiful. You know, people uh, generally people would say, yeah, she's very attractive. Um, she has her shit going for her. Maybe she has a business. She's well educated. She's just a woman that other women would aspire to be and that every man would want. Okay. So when you think about that, you know, you think about Beyonce or somebody, you mm -hmm. know, like, so to me, that's a 10 out of 10 woman. Um, and when we just acknowledge that men don't even have the funds for a family, um, they think that they want a 10 out of 10 woman, but they can't even, they're not on her level, you mm -hmm. know, um, and yeah, it's it's just easy to be like, yeah, I I want that because she's beautiful and she, you know, I men's egos are set up to where their woman is a part of really their image. You know, mm -hmm. I, I saw something that said, you can tell how well a man is doing by looking at his wife. Mm -hmm. You know, if she is looking good, she's set up, she's stress free. That's how you know that man is doing well in life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that men really they they want the 10 out of 10, but they can't. They can't finance her. They are not emotionally there for her. They are not intellectually on her level. They just don't got their shit going on for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the delusions that you think men have in regards to dating and relationships? I think that men think that they have a thousand years and a thousand options. Mm -hmm. I think that they really have the delusion that because we said, you know, as women age, the world might not see her as attractive, but men really believe that as they get older, they are more attractive. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. Like even when people talk about Denzel and they'd be like, oh, Denzel's still so fine. Yeah, but he was more fine 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. So it's like men are delusional with thinking that as they get older, they're going to have all the time in their life to get married. Like we said, like men don't even want to get married till they're 50. Mm -hmm. And they think, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to still be attractive at 50. Women are still going to want me. Okay. Let that ED sit in, mm -hmm. you know, let, let the, let all that, the, let the gut hang out. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, we'll see who wants you then mm -hmm. when you got three baby mamas and, you know, so men really think that they are more valuable as they age and that's not fucking true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not true. First of all, um, we can easily find men that are in their 30s with money. Like, that's not hard to find. Mm -hmm. Those men are sometimes corny, you know, because the money is new to them, mm -hmm. but that's not hard to find. And 
when we talk about attractiveness, men in their 30s are more attractive. So I think that men just feel like they have the illusion of they have all the time in the world. Meanwhile, they have built this fake facade of women hitting the wall. Mm. And it's just like, nigga, if I'm hitting a wall, you are the fucking wall. Mm. You know, like, don't get it twisted. Like, you are not more attractive as you age. And you don't have a thousand options for a wife. Mm. And if you think you do, she only wants you for the money, hun. Right. And when that money run out, she gone. Absolutely. Just like fucking... <laughs> I'll be watching reality TV a lot. Just like off of... Um, Real Housewives of Potomac, Mia and her, <laughs> and her husband, Gordon, uh -huh. you know, he knows that she was with him for the money. And now mm -hmm. that he ain't got no money, they get in a divorce and he's all sad. But it's just like, nigga, you knew what it was. Yeah. You knew what it was. Yeah. So, yeah, I think men just think that they have all the time in the world and, hun, you don't. Yep. If you need honey packs at 40, you don't have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. So, same question for women. What are some of the delusions that women are experiencing in the dating scene? I think women can be delusional when it comes to thinking that... I think the number one delusion of women when it comes to dating is you sitting around waiting for a man thinking that he is going to change or get better after you've already been dating him to, you know, I think that women think that it's okay to move in with a man. They think it's okay to have his children. They think it's okay to cook and clean and wipe his ass. And then when you ain't got no ring in seven years, you're like, what's going on? Sis, you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. He's getting the milk for free. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I think women can be delusional when they give everything up front and then they expect the man to, to commit after the fact. Yeah. If you do not give a man nothing to work towards, he's not going to work towards it. Mm -hmm. That's just human nature. I'm not going to work towards anything I can get for free. Like, right. if I'm getting it from her for free, what I got to do anything for? Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like, you know, women give wifely duties as a girlfriend, and then they are shocked after 10 years when the man leaves them. Well, hun, I mean, what did you expect? Mm -hmm. I mean... It, it, it's just delusional <laughs> to think that when we know that men don't even want commitment, you're mm -hmm. just going to give everything to him up front and then he's going to commit? Come on, sis. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just that's just dumb as fuck. So let's just really get logical and really start to be like, let me give this man something to, to be motivated by. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not having your children unless you marry me. No, mm -hmm. we're not moving in unless you marry me. Mm -hmm. Because that's, if he really loves you, he's going to be like, okay, I got to do this before I get this. Mm -hmm. If he getting the children in the home baked meals or the fucking home cooked meals up front, what the fuck he doing anything else for? But now, wouldn't it be dangerous for folks to to marry after or to move in together after marriage and then you find out that they are a different version once you're intensely with each other 24 7 like you really do believe that folks should wait until marriage to move in i think so mm -hmm. i told my boyfriend i'm not moving in with him and um unless until we're engaged engaged yeah yeah i, I would say engaged mm -hmm. um yeah but i don't believe in that boyfriend girlfriend stuff um you haven't even made no real commitment to me but i'm giving you sex every night i'm over here folding your, your laundry for you you coming home after work and i got chicken in the oven like i'm not doing that shit mm -hmm. because yeah then the man is gonna get lazy and then women think that oh you know he's not doing it right now or you know he's lazy right now but once we get married it's gonna change nigga Mm -hmm. you're delusional if anything he's getting more lazy because he already got you now right so i feel like women just give way too much up front and then they expect on the back end to get rewarded that's not how life works how, how, what does your boyfriend feel about your platform <laughs> he um you know he knew me before the podcast mm -hmm. so he knows me he knows first of all i this is how i talk to him uh -huh. like i have the conversations that i have on the podcast we be having these conversations in real life when we on the couch watching a movie like mm -hmm. he knows he's not surprised by anything that i say mm -hmm. he knows what i expect from him he knows anything that i say on the podcast he's already heard it from me so mm -hmm. he's not shocked by anything honestly mm -hmm. um sometimes he gets taken aback when i say stuff like i'm single till i'm married he like wait what the fuck that mean you know mm -hmm. but i really have to explain it to him look you know, mm -hmm. like let's let's be let's be really real. So this is why you know you have to set standards. So and you have to just be upfront. Like you just got to tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. So he he doesn't think anything of the podcast because he already know what it is. Yeah, and yeah. he supports it. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. So as we wrap up, what are your goals for 2024 and beyond? The goals, man. I just want I just want the podcast to grow. I actually just started a new segment on the podcast called Let's Talk It Out to where um because the one thing about it is the full length episodes with men and we have our little key key and they say their little dumb shit that go mm. viral. Um, but the Let's Talk It Out segment is gonna be more women focused. I'm gonna have women on there to really talk about 
what we need to learn going forward as women so that we are ahead of the game when it comes to dating. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like women, like I said, we we take what we can get, we take what the world has for us, but we aren't necessarily as proactive with dating as we could be. Okay. So yeah, I just want going forward for the pot to grow and for everything to just um, come together and to just really foster that community for black women mm -hmm. um, so that they can feel safe with what they have to say about the dating scene. I love it. So we want to thank Amani for being on the show. Amani, can you let us know where we can find you? How can we connect with you? All that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so the Instagram is Amani Talks Pod. The TikTok is Amani Talks. And then, of course, the YouTube is um, you can search up One Thing About a Podcast. It's on all the major streaming platforms. Um, you can listen. You can watch. And then, yeah, new things will be coming. I really, uh, it's just, uh, I have so many ideas and visions for the podcast. Like, it's just, like, overflowing at this point. But, yeah, that's where you guys can connect and see me and everything and um, get all the updates for the show. We love it. So for our closing conversation, I hope that you were able to take away what I took away, which is you deserve a voice. You deserve a platform. You deserve an uh, opportunity and a community for you to express how you feel, controversial or not, agreeable or not, so that you can express your true self. Again, thank you so much, Armani, for being on the show. Thank That's you. another episode of The Single Season. Peace. <laughs>